All right, welcome back to the Slop channel. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time to talk about game preservation. Yes, I know this topic might seem kind of boring at first, but it's actually really important. Now, since most of you that are watching this channel are probably Racing M fans, I assume most of you have probably heard of the server shutdown of the first crew game. So the game was already taken off stores uh, several months ago, and now starting on with April 1st, the game is officially offline. And what this means is, since the Crew 1 was a game that was always online, so you needed an online connection to even get into the game, the game is now completely unplayable. So if you own the game, you can still install it for whatever reason, but you will not get past the title screen because it will just throw you like a generic error message in your face. And that's as far as you'll get. And in fact, the Crew 1 isn't even the first kind of game that got this treatment over time. See, Need for Speed Worlds was a... MMO racing game type game that pretty much got the same treatment because just like the crew it was always online and so when the server shut down in 2013 I think the game became completely unplayable and uh, no one could access their content microtransactions all of that was basically gone forever. Now obviously the difference between Need for Speed World and the crew is that Need for Speed World was a free to play MMO kind of game whereas the crew was a full price racing game that you could buy for I think 60 bucks a pop when it released and I think that makes a huge difference in this argument. I know I've read a lot of discourse around this topic already uh, and one thing that I just gotta like point out is that a lot of people were like oh well I didn't really care too much about the crew anyways wasn't that game kinda mid why should we care? Well let me tell you why you should care it's because game preservation affects everyone. So even if you didn't give a single crap about the crew, or thought it was mid, or thought it was bad, or whatever, this is a topic that will affect everyone going forwards. Here's a quick example. The next game that I can think of that is probably next on the chopping board is Need for Speed 2015. And let me be clear, I'm now in the same camp as those people that are saying like, oh, I don't care about like, uh, I didn't care about the crew in the first place. In the same way, personally, I don't care about the game itself. I didn't like Need for Speed 2015. I didn't like the handling. I wasn't a fan of the map or the story or most of what that game has to offer. But that doesn't change my stance on game preservation and that I do care about it. Because here's the thing, if you want to care about game preservation, that also means you care about preserving all games. And seeing how the crew had basically 10 years before the service got shut off, and next year Need for Speed 2015 is going to have its own 10 year anniversary, it's pretty fair to say that there's a good chance that EA will pull the plug with that game as well. And despite my opinion on Need for Speed 2015, I don't want that game to shut down. If there are people out there that still want to play this game, or people that have bought it and want to go back to it, they should have the right to do so. My opinion on this game, or my opinion on the crew, or my opinion on any other game that is about to get shut down, is literally as worthless as everyone else's, because the problem still persists, and it still affects everyone. But to go back to the crew real quick, one argument that I also saw a lot, and I think that's a, that this is probably also what Ubisoft is thinking themselves, is, well, why even bother keeping the crew one up when the crew two exists? Right? And a lot of people that aren't really into racing games might probably think the same way. Wait, wasn't there like another crew game? Why don't you just play that instead? And the reality is that the first crew game is just not really replaceable. There's a lot of content that was in the first game that is unique to that game alone. So for example, it had a pretty lengthy story mode, at least I thought so, that, you know, had like pre-rendered, really well-made cutscenes, and that was just really enjoyable to play through. It was you know, a bunch of cool driving missions akin to the driver games. That is not present in neither the Crew 2 or the Crew Motorfest. Another thing that I also really liked in the first Crew game that didn't make the cut anymore for the Crew 2 were these collectibles that are basically, I think they were just called sites. And there was like hundreds of them scattered across this like insanely huge map of the United States. So there was basically spots everywhere on the map that you could drive up on and stop. And honestly, it's not super exciting in terms of gameplay like you basically just stop at a specific place and then you press a button you get some money and xp but what made those sites unique is they basically put those down at like unique spots in the united states and i thought this was such an awesome way to actually learn more about the us to actually like see a bunch of sites you know and and, and do some sightseeing I thought that was awesome it's one of my it was one of my favorite things to do in the game to just drive around aimlessly and find these collectibles. 
Another thing that didn't make the cut over to the crew too were the honestly awesome endurance races. So I think once you finish the story, you unlocked the, I think they were called faction races. And some of them were really long and really awesome. So for example, you had a race that was from one coast to another, or one race that was around the entire border, or you know, a, a four hour marathon that basically leads you across like most of the main sites in the US. It was awesome. And you could do these races with your friends. And I love doing these. I love doing these and just chilling with them, listening to music while talking to pals on Discord or whatever. And none of these races ever made it to the crew too. Like all things considered, I still think that the first crew game wasn't just any random racing game, but I, at least in my humble opinion, it was the single best piece of virtual tourism for the United States. Even better than something like, let's say for example, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which has a one-to-one -one recreation of the United States. But number one, most of the landmass is just filled up with basically flat satellite data. And you can only fly you can only fly over all of it, right? Whereas in the crew, you can actually like stop in front of things. You can drive around, you can look at things from different angles. Like it actually made, it gave me so much knowledge on the actual geography of the United States. And I don't think there's any game like this, especially with the crew too. They also removed a bunch of districts, buildings, even small villages, seemingly for no reason. So with the loss of the first crew game, I think we're actually losing like a pretty important part of video game history, whether you like the game or not. And what makes this even worse is that at least in my opinion, this is an insane spit in the face to all the developers who gave their all to make this game happen. Because that's something that I think a lot of people like to forget is that video games, when you play them, they're made by real people, oftentimes under absolutely ungodly conditions, especially something as massive and ambitious as the crew. And I don't know, maybe I'm being a little bit melodramatic here, but I think all of us, you know, not just developers, but I think all of us, as, like we as people, we have a natural desire to create things or help create things that outlive us in a way. You know, we want to we wanna always like be on the lookout to basically build up a legacy somewhere. Something that people can still look at or interact with that outlives us. And I think that's like a perfectly uh, natural thing. And I think it's also a big reason why people go into game development. Because they want to work on things that people still enjoy for years to come, maybe even after their life is over. And with Ubisoft taking the entire game down, I feel like it's just a spit in the face towards all the developers who've given their all to make this game happen and is basically denying them their legacy. The people that worked on the crew deserve to be remembered and so does their work. And I don't want Ubisoft to take that away. I already mentioned Need for Speed World earlier and you may ask, well, Need for Speed World got community run service and an offline patch pretty much relatively after the game got shut down. Why not just wait for something like this? Why don't we just wait for the community to do an offline patch or maybe even their own servers? Ignoring the fact that this is an insane ask and not even, not even remotely comparable to what people have made for Need for Speed World because the crew is such an ins insurmountably bigger game. The only way you can make this argument is if you assume that Ubisoft is not going to do anything. Because here's the major difference between the crew and Need for Speed World. When Need for Speed World got shut down, EA had no reason to care because they didn't have a new MMO or a new kind of Need for Speed game that was supposed to replace Need for Speed World. Need for Speed World was honestly a failed MMO that near the end of its life barely had any players left. And there was nothing else that EA published or made you know, that, that, that they wanted people to go over, which is not the case with the crew. Ubisoft specifically shut down the crew forever because they want people to play the new games, either the crew 2 or even preferably the crew Modifest. And as I already outlined, those games are way different and Ubisoft does not seem to understand or even care that these games are different. And it's not gonna have the same effect that they think. Just because the Crew 1 is now gone doesn't make people automatically want to play the Crew 2 or Motifest. But to go back to the topic of community servers and offline patches, do you really think Ubisoft is not just gonna take this down? Because as I said, this is exactly what Ubisoft wants. Ubisoft wants people to play the newer Crew games, whether that's even gonna work or not. So naturally, this, the, the moment even a single offline patch hits the internet, Ubisoft is going to strike that down immediately.
And that's not even to mention that if the crew is now gone for good, this sets an absolutely terrible precedent for other publishers because then they know they can just do the same thing. Like, like the keyword here is plant obsolescence, okay? One, I think, really, really obvious and popular example of that was Overwatch, right? When Overwatch 2 came out and they shut down the servers and basically made the first Overwatch completely unplayable because they wanted to play the second game. And guess what? That, that received so much backlash, and deservedly so. And it's not even the first time that a game that was sold for p full price is now completely unplayable. And I think it's time that we start talking about this and start doing something about it. Especially because you never know if this kind of crap also eventually starts to transfer over to other industries. Like imagine if at some point you buy a modern phone okay, with real money that you assume, you know, now belongs to you because you bought it, but then, like, five years later down the line, your manufacturer of the phone is like, okay, well, we made this, like, new phone, so now we're gonna release an update for your old phone that makes it completely unfunctional. Now, if this sounds absolutely ridiculous, it's because it is, but that is exactly what is happening with the crew. But how do we stop this? Well, thankfully, there is now a website called StopKillingGames.com where you can actually contact your local authorities based on where you live and you can send them a letter or a message, you can send them a bunch of receipts, you can basically just barrage your local, <laughs> your local authorities and let them know what is going on and that this probably violates consumer laws in some capacity. Which is especially funny because Ubisoft is based in France. Probably the country with the strictest consumer laws on the planet, or at least among them. And so if we put enough pressure from enough authorities all around the world, maybe even like directly from France, Ubisoft will eventually have to pivot, if that's what the authorities say. And besides, it's not like it is completely impossible out of the question for Ubisoft to do something like this. I mean, just recently GT Sport got shut down, and that was also an always online game. So you couldn't really do anything in the game, you couldn't buy any cars, you couldn't do any like GT League races, the only thing you could do in the game without an, offline co without an online connection was just do random races on random racetracks for basically nothing. But at least Polyphony Digital had the decency to release one final update for GT Sport that now makes the game pretty much playable obviously without the online functionality like multiplayer races. And I think that is honestly the way to go. The best time to stop this kind of crap and actually make our voices heard is now. Because a case like this is pretty unprecedented. As I said earlier, there have been cases of games getting shut down before, but never has that happened to a game this big and prolific, especially for Ubisoft. Because the crew, over its life cycle, had 16 million players. Now keep in mind, the game has already been free a couple times in the past, so that doesn't mean that 16 million people bought the game, but it's at least somewhat in that ballpark. We're talking about 16 million people that now have a game in their library, at worst probably even physical on a disc, that is now completely unusable. At the end of the day, I think games deserve to be preserved, because people worked on this, and these people deserve to be remembered. So go check out the website down below, I'll link it in the description, stopkillinggames.com. And um, I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna take you like 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, depending on uh, what kind of, you know, abilities you have. I, I know I didn't explain like the website too much, but I think it's mostly self-explanatory. Go read up on the FAQ if you have more questions. Uh, and file a complaint to your local authorities. I have done that, I, I know a bunch of other people that have done the same, and maybe we can throw a Hail Mary in, and hopefully it does something. Once again, this is like, I think, the best chance we're gonna have to stop this kind of crap from happening more in the future. And with that, I think I'll leave it for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. Check out the link in the description, file a complaint, and hopefully next time, I can talk about something that's a little bit less dire. Until then, take care.